We're gonna just hold it for a second and uh, we're kind of letting everybody fill up the room. We got we got Mike and Jen and Adam here and then just give us a couple of seconds and make right. sure everybody's in here before we get going. Yeah. I'll play the ukulele while they're waiting. Yeah, please do. We're gonna have a little intro music, a little uke. I'll get the xylophone. I need a sh I need I need that shaker that I used to uh, win the contest with. But it's not here. Oh, very nice. <laughs> All right, so that's our, that's our, our, our stuff. Good. We're like in Una's, we're in Una's toy room right now. And, and so, so we did this last week. And Una walked in as I was playing ukulele. She goes, Dad. You don't even know how to play ukulele. <laughs> that's right. I don't know how to play ukulele. Hey, everybody. That's our intro music uh, performed today by uh, it's a Jeff special treat. And Mike Birbiglia. Uh, I'm Jeff Martin with Magic City Books. We're so thrilled to have you all watching and joining us tonight. Um, thank you. This is our first Saturday night uh, book event virtually. Um, so we thought it'd be fun to just give you something to ex uh, get excited about for your weekend, so thank you for joining us. Um, I wanna tell you about a couple of things coming up. Uh, if you go to our website, Magic City Books, you're gonna see we have a schedule of virtual events all the way through September. Uh, we're really excited on August 5th, we're gonna be talking with John Waters, uh, the legendary John Waters. So uh, there are tickets available for that still. You can go to magiccitybooks.com and get those. And then all the way, you know, and over the next few months, we have lots of great stuff coming up. So I won't go through the whole list. Um, if you, you guys should already have the book, but uh, if you need more copies, we're going to be, you know, in case you want to read it more than once, uh, we will have uh, links in the chat so you can get copies of the new one. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, there's that. So excited for you all. Mike signed copies. So we're going to be getting you guys signed copies of the book, signed book plates. Uh, so those will be coming to you directly. Uh, but at this point, I'm going to hand it over. Uh, we actually have a guest moderator for today, and that's Tulsa's own Adam Bush. Adam is a comedian and the creator of the educational TV program, Pete and Penelope, and also an understudy for Mike Birbiglia. <laughs> so I want to say a big thank you before I sign off to Jen Stein and Mike for joining us. Uh, and I'm going to hand it over to Adam to tell you what the hell I'm actually talking about, about being an understudy for Mike Birbiglia. <laughs> have a great time, guys. Thank you for joining us. Have you had a, a hey. understudy since Mike? Oh, is there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, good. Okay. Hey, by the way, thanks to Jeff. Thank yeah. you, and uh, and thanks to Magic City Books for hosting us. And and uh, I will say, Adam, Adam and I met I think about two years ago, and you you have been banging the drum for me to come to Tulsa ever since, and we're here. You're here. I don't know why you're not physically here. It doesn't make any sense. Nobody knows why. No one's sure, but you said no. <laughs> yeah, um, let's see. Uh, I, I think it was about two o'clock in the morning when I was, uh, I couldn't sleep a couple of years ago and I saw a, a, a you on Jimmy Fallon on my Facebook feed. And you were doing the new one. You were you were about to do the new one on Broadway, your Broadway right. show. Yep. And you were holding a contest called the Burbigs Understudy. Yes. To which, when I when I would explain this, the concept of this, it would make no sense to people. Yes. Uh, who? Because you can't have an understudy for a one man show. Right. And you just said, "Hey, you want to come? You want to?" You out there in the world, if you want to be my understudy, quote unquote, yeah, make a make a video of you doing an old set of yours, and uh, upload it. And I did, yeah. And I didn't, and I didn't hear anything <laughs> for weeks. And then one day I heard something. <laughs> I remember. I know, I don't think I ever told you. I got a notification on my watch at work, and it said like the new one at B-Way or at new one B-Way is now following you on Instagram. Oh. I, said to my, I said to my friend, that's Ooh. weird. I wonder why they would follow me. <laughs> wow. And then got a little message that I won and that's, that was how we met. Well, I'll tell you something interesting about your video because, because there were, there were technically three winners, mm -hmm. you and Hannah Solo 
Maria Dakotas. Maria Dakotas has like a really popular Twitter yeah. feed right now because she does these TikToks of Cuomo's mm. voice and they're really, really good. Mm. But yours was viably, and Ira Glass, our producer, said this also, and our director Seth Barris said this as well. Yours viably was the success of the contest because you could actually do the show mm. and be an understudy in a way that we did not previously know was possible. Well, thank you. I don't think that's true. <laughs> I, think, I think many people would have been disappointed had Adam Bush come out at Mike Birbiglia's <laughs> show. Well, we'd have to discount the tickets. <laughs> you like Mike, you're gonna maybe be okay with this guy. Uh, there's a little bit, it's a $13 special tonight. <laughs> He's from Tulsa. Um, but Adam, yes. and by the way, I just want to make sure that we're seeing Jen and I, I'm Mike, just so people, people, in case people don't know. This is Jen, AKA J Hope Stein. If you notice she's not talking as much, it's because she's a poet. She is an introvert. Is that, is that safe to say? Yes. If you've read the book, that's, that's, Obvious. Yeah, you get that. <laughs> yeah. But but I will say like the uh This is what I'm like at parties, so Yeah, this is it. That might be a lot of fun. Like literally, Adam, one of our promos uh that we might shoot as a video is this thing where I go like I like I say, come out to the virtual event. It's me and my <laughs> wife Jen, and there's a lot of back and forth and you know, stuff like that, where it's like <laughs> we're witty together and we bounce to pop each other like, you know what I mean? Like, well, you know, that guy kind of thing. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> we have Love a little it. bit of a Penn and Teller thing going. Yeah. I like it. Mike, you know, actually I was realizing, and maybe this is a good segue, the, the, the first time we met was when I opened for you on Broadway, but the first time we were in the same room together yes. was in Weatherford, Oklahoma. Yes, and I, and I was even thinking that maybe I'll, I'll start with a passage from my Weatherford chapter t tonight. Yeah. Since, since we're in Oklahoma right now. Yeah, we are. I love it. I love I'm, it. I'm just trying to find it, actually. Um, um, I've always, while you're looking for it, I've always wondered, you were almost late to the show. Yeah, I know, man. You flew into the wrong airport. Well, look, <laughs> wrong airport. Everybody, everybody has their own opinion about things, about travel. One of my rules of travel is no stopover flights. Mm. And, and so I flew into D I, Dallas, Fort Worth. Okay, yeah. And then I drove up to Weatherford and it was a huge mistake. Huge mistake. Yeah, it was another airport, it's much closer. Yeah, but it's a stopover, right? I mean, because I there was no There was no direct flight that, that no, way. There's no direct flight to OKC or Tulsa from New York City. Oh, okay. That's well, I was looking for that. If, uh, if you're watching and you have questions for Mike or Jen, then you can yeah, put them. If anyone wants to start, I will say this about Adam, and, and you can post questions for Adam too. Um, oh, Catherine Pitt said she also auditioned for that. Okay. Catherine, we're audition buddies. Yeah. What page is that on? It is what it is, page 173. Yeah, if you want to know any horrible secrets about Broadway, this guy can tell you all about it. It's, uh, it was pretty nice. Yeah, so what I will say this, you, you know, you guys live in town with Adam, and uh, I will say that Adam is a big, big, earnest advocate of Tulsa. Mm, it's true, I am. And, and I feel like a big reason why I'm gonna visit Tulsa when this all blows over is yeah. Magic City Books and Adam Bush and all of you. Uh, I need help, everyone. Just start <laughs> posting on Instagram, Mike and Jen, come to Tulsa. Come and come in like the fall because then you can, the weather won't be terrible, won't be like so hot. You go to the uh, gathering place. This is a chapter called There's No Me in We. Five months into Una's life, Jen and I are li both living our dreams come true, but for the first time in our marriage, they are different dreams. I'm on tour with a new show and Jen is a mom. I'm rooting for her and she's rooting for me, but we're growing apart. One, and, and the ending is 
when we're together. So don't, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> uh, cliffhanger. Um, one night I'm doing a show in Weatherford, Oklahoma, which is a direct flight from nowhere, which is why I flew into Dallas. Google Maps told me Dallas was a four hour drive to Weatherford, but I'll tell you something about Google Maps. It's, it's a fucking liar. <laughs> I apologize uh, if people don't like that kind of language, but uh, Google Maps is like that uncle you have who isn't going on the trip, but has very strong opinions about the trip. Uncle Google Maps is like, eh, it's like four hours. I mean, you're like, but Uncle Google Maps, a lot of these are side roads and that just looks like a field. Uh, eh, four and a half. Don't forget to stop at Waffle House, best waffles. It's a seven hour drive. Dallas to Weatherford. I drive with my comic friend Mike McCray, and we're uh, he lives in Austin actually, and we're we're seven hours into this trip, and he's chain smoking out the window. By the way, I never cleared this with Mike McCray to see if it was okay if I talked about him chain smoking on this trip, but like such is such is life. Um, I drive with a comic friend named Mike McCray. He's a hilarious comic, by the way. You should follow. And we're seven hours into the trip and he's chain smoking out the window, which killed me because I rented the car and I signed a form that said something to the effect of, if you smoke, we'll take your brain out of your skull. And I'm signing it thinking, Mike for Bigley, I'm sure that'll be fine. But McCray is very intimidating, so I don't want to bring it up. I, I say, hey, maybe don't. I think they might take my brain out of my... McCray cuts me off. He says, I've been smoking in rentals for 17 years. Fair enough, smoke away. Don't mind me, I'm just lightheaded and have no idea where we are, which is true. Uh, after six and a half hours, we're running out of gas through fields of nothing. I mean, nothing. There are parts of Oklahoma where they don't even have molecules. You're driving on a road and all of a sudden you think, we're nowhere in space and time, but there are two senators, which is odd, even if you live in Oklahoma. But that's not the point. I don't know what to do, so I drive faster to avoid the suspense of running out of gas. And the next time we, the next town we arrive in is literally called Corn. And I think now God is just fucking with us. I'm like, Uncle Google Maps, you ever hear of Corn? He's like, Corn? Okay. Which is just the state abbreviation for Oklahoma. But it isn't okay because we, they don't have gas in corn. They might have ethanol, but we don't need ethanol. We finally roll into Weatherford on, on fumes and 20 minutes later, we're performing in a giant gymnasium and pretty much no one is there, which makes sense because very few people live in Weatherford. <laughs> All things considered, the show goes well. Adam Bush was there. That's not in the book. When I'm in <laughs> Oklahoma, I just make fun of Texas. And when I'm in Texas, I make fun of Oklahoma. I say things like, those gun-toting, one tooth idiots in Texas, and they go nuts. Oklahomans don't see the irony, which is they're basically the same state separated by an arbitrary border. They're like, our state's shaped like a whistle, which it is. After our show, I check into my one and a half star hotel in Weatherford, it's 11 p.m. and it had given away my first floor room since we got there so late. Uh, and I, 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 uh, I stay in first floor rooms when I travel in case, you know, I sleepwalk through uh, my second story window, which, which happened one time. That's my first book, Sleepwalk With Me. Uh, but there's a lot of red flags. There's an old, dirty comforter that seems to have not been cleaned in a decade, a mildewy bathroom, smoky curtains, rickety windows. And I think, I guess I might die. But there's nothing I can do about it. I've flown five hours, driven seven hours, performed for 90 minutes. I have no energy, and this feels like deja vu with my incident in Walla Walla. So I barricade the window with an enormous standing dresser, it's about 100 pounds, and I push it across the room and block the window. I get my sleeping bag, and the next morning I wake up and drive all the way back to Dallas to catch my flight, and there's delays from storms, so finally after a day of travel, I walk into our apartment at one in the morning, and I'm soaking wet and exhausted and entirely empty, and I arrive at my beloved couch, and Una is asleep on the couch. And I whisper to Jen, I say, Chloe, it's not a big deal. Jen says, great news, that's where Una likes to sleep. I said, I totally get it. And in the short term, that makes a ton of sense, but long term, I think she may want to sleep in a crib. Jen says, we decided Una doesn't like to sleep in a crib. I say, who's in we? 
And I, I, I said, Jen says, me and Una. And I said, I'm not in WE anymore. I'm a founding member of WE. And I walk in the bedroom, get into my straight jacket. I sleep in like a sleeping bag. That's sort of like a straight jacket. It is a shocking revelation when you discover you've been evicted from your own life. And that's the end of the chapter. There's no me in we. It's one of my favorite chapters. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I, and we'll look at the comments to see if there's any questions or if there's uh, Someone was wondering a, if I have vodka in my drink. The answer is no vodka. We don't have any liquor or vodka or alcohol at all in our house. So if you have any, send us some. We're short, we're short on booze. Yeah. But we want you to drink. Let's see here. It's a family event. My, this, is, this is how family this is. My old roommate's mom is on here. Hi, Kelly. Yes, <laughs> come to Tulsa. I will. 100%. That's how, that's how tight, there's 400, I know this, 400,000 people live in Tulsa versus 8 million in New York. So we, we know everyone. Oh, here's a throwback. All about it. Yeah. Here's a throwback for you. This is, uh, Adam, this is a, this is a real, this is a sincere question. When you flew back from New York to Tulsa, what'd you do? Stop over flight through Atlanta? You mean when I came to, to, when we met? New York for Broadway. Uh, Dallas. Oh, you flew through Dallas to Tulsa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, Reese Martin, I think I'm saying your name right. He's got a throwback. He says, what I should have said was nothing at the center of the universe, only in Tulsa. <laughs> That's like this spot. I don't know everything about it, but it's a spot downtown where if you are standing there, like it's outside, it's an, it's an echo all the way around you. Like you just okay. yell. And, really? Yeah. Any, yeah. Any questions about that chapter? I will, I could provide color commentary to my experience. Talk about that, oh talk about that venue. Oh, well that's, that's interesting because you were at that show and I really did think it was like, gonna be a hell gig. And I have, I took a joke out of the book because I was like, I don't know how this will age which is I said, uh, who's the last comedian you had? And they said, uh, Bill Cosby. And I said, that's about right. That feels like <laughs> foreboding. Um, but I thought that the gig was gonna go terribly because it's a big gymnasium. They sort of like, they pour sort of put like a stage in the gymnasium. Yeah. And, um, and I, it actually went remarkably well. Like I, here's what I'll say about my, my visits to Oklahoma over the years. I have a very, if you got the email, if you're on the, my email list, you, you know that I wrote an email from Mike Birbiglia to my 192 fans in Oklahoma. That's how many people on my mailing list. I know the metrics of how many people follow me in Oklahoma, it's not that many. And, uh, and uh, so, but that show was so fun because those 100, I think those 192 all showed up and they were great. And then, uh, and then this woman said this thing to me after that show, and I feel like I'll always remember this. I actually, I've written about it, but it's not published yet. Which is, uh, she said, thanks for the show. She goes, she goes, my grandfather and I, who's passed, he, he if I, I'm trying, I hope to get this right. If, I, if I'm not getting this right, I apologize, but this is from my memory. She goes, my grandfather and I always bonded on uh, humor. We didn't agree on everything, but we, we always laughed at similar things. And he always used to say this expression, and the expression was, people's just always been funny. And, uh, and, and he used to work, I think he used to work on a cemetery. There used to be a chapter in the book called People's Always Been Funny. Yeah, there was a chapter that would come out of the book called People's Always Just Been Funny, because I just love that phrase. People's just always been funny. And, uh, and, it, and he, it was, she's talking about her grandfather and how he had, a, he had a friend who had a big nose and, the, and, the, and, the, and he was walking around the cemetery and he was reminiscing about a conversation he had with this friend who was, who was in the ground and, and had expressed concern that his nose would not fit in the coffin. Of course, he's kidding. But, uh, but, but, he, but, but, the, but then he looked at his granddaughter and he says, people's just always been funny. And I, love, I love that sentiment. Like, I just love, I love, I, 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 there's something about that. And, and, and that was the warmth I felt in Oklahoma when I was there 
of even though it's not a state that I'm wildly popular in, I do feel a kindred spirit with the people of Oklahoma. Well, Sarah here says, I was one of the few people in the audience at that Weatherford show. I <laughs> loved it. I even waited after to get a photo with you. She might have been the people's just always been funny. Am, am I wrong? Was Were you working on Thank God for Jokes for that show? I think so. Yeah, because there's the Muppet bit in that. And that's one of my favorite yeah. bits. Yeah. yeah. So go yeah. back and watch Thank God for Jokes if you... And, if you, uh, and corn's yeah. real. Corn's a real town. Someone's asking, Sh Cherry, Cherry or Sherry, sorry, is asking, have you ever performed in the Corn Palace in Mitchell, South Dakota? No. <laughs> no. Which is another corn... Another corn related yeah. thing. I, I never know. I played everywhere. I played Sioux Falls, but I've never played corn. corn How is it not playing anywhere right now? I went to the third grade in Weatherford, says Kelly Owen. Just to that's, be part that's, that's my, that's my, my oh. friend's mom. I mean, oh, she's my friend too. Mom. All right, there you go. Um, yeah. Well, let's, um, let's do the choose your own adventure yeah. part. So, so the first two that we'll let you choose from, you want to hold them up? That's okay. Um, I love my marriage. So, so, so we're picking in the chat which chapter. It's up to we, you. The audience, doesn't know the audience decides whether we read "Who Did" or "I Love My Marriage," and just vote. Just <laughs> vote in the chat. In the chat. For who did, or I love my marriage. So I love my marriage is the beginning of the book. The who did, oh, who did, who did? Whoa. Who okay. did, who did, who did, who did, who did, who did? Oh, no. feels like. <laughs> I, 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 I think it goes, I think it goes to who did. So fast. Man, everyone's so fast. They're just basing it off of what they Quick think drop. it's about. Someone said LMAO. Okay, who did? Um, all right, I'm going to go to who did. Um, when Jen and I first met, our work schedules didn't match. Jen worked nine to six in an office building overlooking the Hudson. I was on the road about 70% of the time doing shows to make matters worse when i was in new york i was performing at night so i stay with me showed up at her job every day <laughs> without an invitation sure. for two and a half weeks in current times this would be called stalking at the you time get in trouble called yeah yeah at the time it was called stalking also um i wouldn't recommend this tactic unless you're willing to go to jail and or get married so i would show up at jen's work every day with flowers pop into the conference room or her office, Jen would be mortified. She'd whisk me out to Pier 60 and we would make out on the promenade. The first time this happened, Jen dropped, Jen's, the first time this happened, Jen's phone dropped out of her pocket mid kiss. Okay. Little time. Prank calls from Fetch. The first time my husband kissed me, my cell phone fell out of my pocket into the Hudson River. And to this day, I still receive prank calls from fish. I'm not saying that our marriage is perfect, but I think all marriages have an undercurrent of tension at all times because you have two people experiencing many of the same events at the same time with two completely different memories of the same event. A few years ago, we were in a lobby we, sorry, a few years ago, we were in a hotel elevator in Chicago, and I remembered that on the lobby level, there was a cafe that Jen had loved a few years before. And I said, I just remembered you loved the cafe at this hotel. And Jen said, who did? And I thought, oh no, because the subtext of who did was A, that wasn't me. B, that was another woman you're dating. C, I'm not happy about this. We get to the lobby and the elevator's door open and the elevator doors open and Jen says, oh my God, I love this cafe. <laughs> then I thought I nearly died in the elevator. I almost had a heart attack two minutes ago and you just casually remembered that I'm right. 
So now whenever we have a shared memory that isn't exactly the same, one of us says the phrase who did, which is our way of saying we're both probably wrong. And, uh, and in the end of the chapter, and this is sort of like, I think significant to the arc of the whole book is, um, which is all to say I'm married to someone uh, who gets prank calls from fish and has visited a special little cafe in Chicago twice, whether she remembers it or not, and has shared with, had shared with me for years the solidarity that we would never have children. I didn't want to lose that. I didn't want that to change. And then that's the end of the chapter. Jen, that's one of my favorite poems. I have it highlighted in, in the book. Thank you. Yeah, I love that one. True story. <laughs> that is, by the way, Kelly Owen came in strong. Pro pose prose posal. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, if that's I, good. I, I, I think that in the, in the pun game, mm -hmm. I think prose posal as a pun for, for marriage is as strong as you're gonna, a literary marriage is as strong as you're gonna get. Yeah. Kelly, we might okay. steal that. There, there it is, Kelly. Put it, put it in your show. Is that, I think I heard you say, Mike, that uh, Una loves puns. Una loves silliness. Mm. So I think like, like all the jokes that we try to come up with are kids' jokes. Like we were at the beach the other day, and Jen said her favorite kids' joke. Oh yeah, it what? goes, what's. <laughs> I don't know any jokes. This is the only joke I know. What is the best time to go to the dentist? Adam, can you go? Um, I'm yeah. assuming 2.30. <laughs> you were good. You were good. There's a reason you were the understudy champion. That's it. That's really I'm a, I like the, the delivery of I'm assuming 2.30. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I also assuming 2.30, he says, with very regal spirit. Well, my favorite line so far is that Jen's your wife and she said she only knows one joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, joke, joke. I know a lot of like verbiglia esque jokes, but those are like mm. storytelling journeys. So like, so like, so like one of the jokes, like when I'm directing I could do Mike too. I could have won that understudy. I, I would have loved to have seen that that submission. I would have, I would have picked it. So the, one of the one of the silly jokes that we tell around the house that is um, that is a uh, or I use it sometimes when I'm directing too, like mm -hmm. actors, just to lighten the mood, just to do like goofy jokes, like joke jokes, is that you lead someone into the. It's sort of like a vaudeville format. I lead you into something, so it's like. Um, so like we're doing like I, like I'm thinking of moving. Uh, yeah, it is. It is in the book. In it's the in the book. book. It's, it's, in, a, it's mentioned in the book. It's actually I'll set the scene for when we do it. But like I, for instance, I I get really weirded out by like getting my blood taken. Um, yes. I had my um, gallbladder removed. My yes. pregnancy was like so touch and go at certain points, and so in those moments. I'm also scared to fly. Like, so in those moments where my brain just kind of takes over, Mike just, I like, tells me like dumb jokes, like really <laughs> dumb jokes. I'll flip to it. The only uh, yeah. thing that works. And then, so there's so, a scene so, where so I'll, I'll read, read it. I'll read it. Okay. So it goes, my friend Henry taught me this old fashioned vaudeville joke. So I say, yeah. I'm thinking, oh yeah, I'm thinking of going clothes shopping at that state over the bridge. And I wait for her to respond. And I go, you know, that that state over the bridge from New York. Jersey? <laughs> new Jersey's new pants, a whole new wardrobe. <laughs> and uh, it's so stupid. I mean, it's literally, it's like, it's like in the vein of the, of, the, of the thing. So like, that's a way that we try to lighten the mood with these like dumb jokes. So like one with, with Adam would be like, so I was, uh, so we're doing this event right now in, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a state that I would, uh, I'd love to have, you know, have a place in someday, you know, the state that, that you're in. Oklahoma. Oklahoma's, Oklahoma apartments, yeah. Oklahoma condos. <laughs> yeah. Really anything in Oklahoma would be nice. That Oklahoma farm would be good. 
It's good. Yeah. Does it work, Jen? Did it lighten the mood? It does. Yeah. That's okay. exactly what I need when I'm like terrified or the, the point in the book is when I'm like, oh, yeah. I wake up one morning and I'm bleeding and we're in a cab on the way to the hospital. And so those moments, it really helps. It helps like get me out of my head and kind of joke around. Actually, I got my gallbladder taken out last year and Mike couldn't come in, come in with me like right in the final moments when they're putting me down. And the doctor, putting me down. <laughs> I guess that sounds a little dark. That was it. Like, you know, like old yeller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like my like really serious doctor was like, um, he was like, uh, I know, do you want me to tell you some jokes? Because I was just like, I really wanted Mike to be there and tell me some jokes. Yes. And then my doctor was telling me, did I ever tell you this? You told me that, He started yeah. telling me some jokes and then I was like, uh, yeah, it helps. Them jokes jokes are, are helpful. They're healthy. That's that's why this is this is a good book for yep. COVID. <laughs> it's with the CDC. Is, yeah, yeah. The CDC's recommending new, the new one. Yeah. Are you getting your gallbladder yeah. removed? Buy this book. Yes. Do you have cancer? Buy this book. Okay. I can say that because I I've had cancer, so it's okay if I make that joke. Ooh. Um uh someone saying where the nickname close. Oh yeah. You That's know, a throwback. a lot. It's really silly story. We were, it's, should we just make up a story? This we, is should, so we could make up. We could make up one. Yeah. And what would it be? Um, uh, so when I was first dating Jen, mm -hmm. I realized that there were there were two of her. Yeah. And and I would call her Jen, and then I would call the other Jen oh. clone. And then there's Chloe, like, and then, but she's in, so it, it was a catchy Chloe. Yeah. There's Chloe and then Clone. And then Clone, we had to kill Clone, actually. Uh, <laughs> I thought, because I we I didn't, no, no, you're Chloe, she's Clone, killed Clone. Because, uh, you know, you can't have the Clone in the mix all the time. I thought I was Clone. By the way, that's a world premiere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Stay we've next year. That, we've been asked that question a lot. We have never come up with a murder scenario made up. It's just not a good story where the nickname is. I like the clone so, story. The clone yeah. story's fun. We're going to work on that. That's I think gonna... killing the other clone is pretty funny. Though. I think they do that. I think on the clone is basically. Yeah, that's fun. It's a big misunderstanding. So no one, no one gets to know. Like, you're just well, never going to tell anyone. Look, I mean, we can. The gist is like she called me Mo one day out of nowhere. She goes, okay, Mo, and I go, okay, Mo, to her. I go, thanks, Mo, to her. Like, we both have the same nickname kind of thing. And then she goes, I'm not Mo, I'm Clo. I'm Clo. And then it just stuck. The way that the dumbest things just stick sometimes. Yeah. Um, Sorry. About all right, you want to do another uh, Do another pass? On so, from that side or this side? Are you Whatever you think. Here, so, I'll pick a couple and you pick a couple from that side and then okay. we'll just let them decide. Okay. Okay, uh, we have four options this time. You guys can pick. Ooh. Okay, okay. I'm going to do these two. Are you really agree with that? Sure, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, good. So, vows and invis invisible balloons. That's one. Vows and invis invisible who, balloons. Who doesn't smell? Mm, that's a good one. Flash, come out, little poop. Yep. And then um, in that one, you would have to hear me sing. Right, true. Not, not much of a singer, but dating my wife, and we pay for sex. Mm -hmm. so very together. It's a very sexy selection. Very sexy chapter. Maybe too sexy. This is Maybe really. Sexy. This one's really sexy. Sugar fries. <laughs> <laughs> and ween. And ween. So one more time. Okay. Again. It is guys vote on vows and invisible balloons, or the poo doesn't smell, or come out little poop. Dating my wife, we paid for sex, sugar fries, ween. Okay. I mean, okay, I'm seeing. I'm voting for the poo doesn't smell, and I think what a lot of people. Want to. Poo doesn't smell. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody just said, "Let's see, Kristen, but poo." And must see. Oh. You guys know I'm not a singer, right? <laughs> Dating my wife, sugar fries, poop, vows, and invisible balloons. This is really splitting the room. Dating my wife. There's a lot of poop. Oh, hey, Mike. Sorry. There's, I've been reading the chat for questions. There's another thing here with questions. Oh, there's more? 
Fail on the moderator. Okay, so we'll okay. read this and then I'll ask some. Of, sorry, and then I'll ask some of these questions. Okay. Okay. Um, so, what do you? People seem to sing. Want the singing? They do. I think that's the present <laughs> smell plus the singing. Okay, I got Plus, I'm out a little. Oh, while you're, I, this is, I love this one. Someone just shout out to Joey Bag of Donuts. How's he doing? <laughs> donuts. I met him. I met him. I was oh, more yeah. excited to meet him. Yeah, Joe, <laughs> Joe's good. Joe's, Joe's a great Joe's guy. A fun one to meet. We've seen him quite a bit. We are currently located in Rhode Island to be near mm -hmm. family, and yeah. that's where Joey Bag of Donuts is. Cool. So we see Joe quite a bit. So he'll be he'll be excited mm -hmm. for the shout out. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Oh, I found Sorry. it. I found it. It's uh. It says it on there. It's right. Okay. It's right here for me, but, but I, for you, I don't know. Page seventy five. Should I start? Yeah, should. We don't tell people Jen is pregnant. Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll begin by saying the poo doesn't smell. We don't tell Jen, we don't tell people Jen is pregnant for months. This is fine with Jen. If my introverted wife has her way, we won't tell anyone she's pregnant ever. <laughs> it's true, right? It sounds like an exaggeration, but I want to be here to clarify that this is true. Um, She'll just have the baby and people will think, I guess they have a baby. But not telling people things is challenging for me. I stand up at strip malls and state fairs and virtual events in Tulsa and give monologues with segues like, and another thing about me. So finally <laughs> I say, Flo, we have to tell someone you're pregnant because you can't just show up with a baby because everyone's gonna be like, whose baby is that? And we'll be like, that's ours, sorry. So the first person we tell is Barack Obama. We're lucky enough to be in line to take a photo with the president, and I see this as a tremendous opportunity. I say, Chloe, we should tell the president you're pregnant. Chloe says, absolutely. So when we get to the front of the line, I say, Mr. President, this is my wife, Jen. She's newly pregnant, but don't tell anyone. Which, by the way, is a great trick. If you ever meet anyone who you know doesn't care about meeting you, tell them a secret. If you run into Jack Nicholson, you shouldn't say, what was it like making Chinatown? You should say, I have a weird thing about Kiwi. And then he'll be like, wait, what is it? Next thing you know, you're, you're deep diving with Nicholson on Kiwi. But it's a decent tactic. When we tell the president our pregnancy secret, he says, um, am I the first to know? Obama is hooked. Not only that, he's doing his best Obama impression. <laughs> the line is actually, he's doing the best Obama impression I've ever seen, which is actually funnier. <laughs> then Jen says, yeah, do you have any parenting advice? And Obama says, um, get some sleep. And we're, we're laughing, but not only because he's the president. Sorry. And we're laughing, but only because he's the president. It isn't that strong comedically, but he's like your boss times a million. And uh, then Obama says, no, actually, I got something. When you bring him home, the poo doesn't smell. It doesn't smell like adult poo. Adult poo smells bad. The moment the president says poo, I think this is the greatest day of my life. I could die right now and I'd be fine with it. Like I make a false move, Secret Service accidentally shoots me in the head. In the final moments before my body hits the floor, I would shout, the president said poo, we're all just people. The president says, when you bring them home, the poo doesn't smell, it doesn't smell like adult poo, adult poo. Smells bad. Then he looks at me for affirmation. I say, absolutely, Mr. President. And then I think, adult poo does indeed smell terrible, a belief I hold until this very day. Then he says, when you bring him home, the breastfeeding doesn't always work out right away. It can be a little bit wonky. Don't freak out. And babies crave structure. And they're eating and they're sleeping. And if it doesn't work out right away, don't freak out. And he pauses and he thinks about it. I start to think about how much I am going to freak out. And then he says, that's actually some pretty good advice. He compliments his own advice. And then Jen says what I believe to be the funniest thing one could say to the president of the United States. She says, if you think of anything else, <laughs> text us. Who doesn't smell? When my daughter learns to use the toilet, we sing to her poops to coax them into this world. Wish I had the vodka right now. Okay, here we go. Come out, 
come out, come out, little poop, and say hello to daughter and me. Come out, come out, come out, little poop, and say hello to mommy and me. <laughs> my daughter poops a treasure more valuable. <laughs> my daughter poops a treasure more valuable to earth, says earth, than any contributions of the high arts. That's really special. I love that poem. I've never done that for an audience before. It's, it's really a beautiful says, treasure song. <laughs> it's it's Kirsten thing. Robert. I'm like usually a really Applause, says Kelly Owen. I usually just like write things down, but I don't actually perform them. So I've never, so we're like, this has really been kind of like a trick on myself, being like having to perform things. This whole thing is paper. a ruse. <laughs> like it's been... all a Truman Show <laughs> escapade to trick Jen into revealing Wait. herself to the world. Uh, anonymous. Oh, rock. I'm lighting a match. Thank I love you. that. <laughs> Says the Neil family or Nell family. Highlight of, highlight of Kaylee's week right there. They put my oh, Obama impression. That's so sweet. Thank you. Mike does a good Obama. People always ask me, people always ask me like why I do, occasionally I do impressions and it's not often. I don't do a lot of impressions, but I do them only with people who I've listened to a lot. Mm -hmm. So like, in other words, I can do a decent Ira Glass because I've listened to Ira Glass a lot. I can do a decent Obama because I've listened to Obama a lot. Someone I mean, I'd like to hear the Ira Glass if possible. I already get sort of mad when I do it. I did it one time on Jim, James Corden. Uh -huh. And he was like, your impression of me is like sort of mean. So I'll try to think of like a, a nice way to do it. Like, so if you listen to my podcast, which is called Working It Out, you probably, if you're on this, you probably know about it, okay. but it's, it's good. It's good. Like the, uh, there's a new episode coming out. There's one with Hasan Minaj that just came out. That's really good. And then there's one coming out with Melissa Villasenor on, on Monday. Um, from Saturday Night Live, and, and it's great, but it's a good podcast, and I'm not saying because of me, but the, the guests are really wonderful, and Ira, <laughs> he's, he's the first episode, and he gives criticism of my stuff, which is so raw, and he's, he's right, you know, and he's like, he'll be like, it's, he's like, you're telling me, he's like, you're telling me that your story is about, about how you felt, like, you, 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 you're experiencing, you're thinking about your own death for the first time, but you're not even talking about that. You know, like that, that's what your story's about. Your story's not about this. You know, you're not talking about what your story's about. You know, and that, that's sort of my ira just because I hear him talk all the time. It's pretty spot on. That's good. That's spot on. <laughs> um, there's a question. Advice? Yo, thank, this yep. is from Christine Se Segui Harris. I don't know, I, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, if <laughs> someone says that Catherine Pitt says if Sorry. Jen needs an understudy, I'm available. And I do. She does. Yeah, I would love that. She'll take you up on that. She's going on Jimmy Fallon. Christine says, do you have any advice for a reluctant dad during the pandemic? And Adam can answer this as well. Um, is, uh, I would say, always work harder um, to support your partner more than you think that you should. Because I always find in hindsight, in the like first 13 months of the my daughter's life which is when the book takes place in when i look back on which part was um my personal struggle uh, which part of my personal struggle was like my struggle in becoming a dad versus which was how much of it i could have sort of um helped uh, on my own and and uh it, it's if i had if I had changed more diapers, done more dishes, cleaned more clothes, like simple things. Things that you did today. I did that today. I did laundry, he did the dishes, he made dinner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I just think if you, the, the more that you think about doing more for your partner, the, uh, the better off you are in a partnership. Thank you. Someone, Sharon's pointing out that that could be an Iron Glass or a Fred Armisen impression. You're absolutely right. They're not that dissimilar. I feel like you have a friend. So friend's yeah, because my friend is like yeah, because my friend would be like, hey Mike, um, <laughs> like, hey Mike, um, 
yeah, I really love the show. I mean, I just, the stuff that you're revealing about yourself, like, I, I just would never, I just ne- would never do that. Like, I, I don't know. That's just not what I do. <laughs> Fred came to the show uh, with, uh, with uh, Natasha. Natasha. Fred and Natasha came, and it was well, when the show was on Broadway, and it was one of my favorite. Good advice. I've been married 45 years this next October. Congratulations, Cherry O'Neill. Um, <laughs> 40, 45 years, holy cow. But yeah, Fred Armisen and Natasha came one night and, uh, and Natasha goes, if I, if I did a show like that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything for the next 10 years. I just quit. If I had my own Broadway show where I talk about, I do that, I wouldn't even do this anymore. That was, that was Natasha and then Fred was like, I don't, I, 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 don't, I could never, I can't imagine doing that. I get the similarity now, because if you did that impression, I would not know Ira Glass or Fred Armisen, who came to your show based on that. <laughs> That's a world premiere of those two. Someone uh, asked, what's your favorite joke you've ever written? I say someone, because they put anonymous here. Um, it's a simple joke that I think I referenced in the book, in the chapter uh, about, about the movie Spotlight. And the joke is, I was an altar boy as a kid. And the answer is no, I wasn't. And I think it's because they knew I was a talker. I have that look about me. The reason I like that joke is that it shines a light on a problem, which is abuse in the Catholic Church, and which I grew up under. I was not abused, but I was in that community in Massachusetts, and I was an altar boy. Um, But it's quick. It's economic. It's a joke that, like, set up punch, but it actually has sort of a it's sort of a, a, a deeper uh, meaning. Someone else asked, Jen's poetry was great in the special. Are there any additional poems added to the new one? Also, I could the- answer this with his book that he brought today. Oh, but you, they mean in the new one. Yeah, oh, but they mean uh, in the new one. In the oh. new one. And, then, and then does Jen have a favorite chapter? Oh, in the new one book, I have a lot more poems. Yeah. So originally, we were just gonna use the ones from the show. And then we just, I don't know, we keep putting more in. So yeah. there's like 30 poems in the book. They're kind of sprinkled throughout. Um, my favorite chapter in the book. Oh my gosh. It might be. Um, Is, uh, you like the pizza chapter a I lot. I love the pizza chapter. I like the pizza chapter and I like the we learn to dance chapter. The two. You love the, I like you the, love the pun. You love the pun, Anamata Pizza. That's, that's my favorite joke. I don't know if it's funny to me, but I'm like, I like wordplay. Um, the, um, the other thing is Adam should hold up Little Astronaut because he has it there. Um, that is Jen's book that we, it's a chat book that we used to, we pulled some poems from that, not all of them. Uh, and then added more. And added more. For the new one, and then there was a there's an independent bookstore promotion which we may bring back. And Magic City Books is actually a great candidate for this in the fall, which is that we were doing a thing where if you buy if you pre-order this back in the spring, 40 years ago, uh, you could get a copy of Little Astronaut. We got them and sold it. Um, unfortunately, because of the pandemic and everything. That promotion sort of didn't happen. Well, that promotion's sitting in a box. At sitting the in a box publisher. to the publisher. That's and where my books are. There's like literally nice. thousands of little astronaut that Adam's holding and they're not in, in New York. They're all there. Yeah. And so to sign a signature. Yeah. Sign copy. Yeah. And and she and, and so and so Magic City Books, let us know if you want to do that promotion in the fall so we can get to the people of Tulsa a copy of uh, Little Astronaut. Because I mm-hmm. a beautiful book. I love it. So let's do one more couplet okay. to close because we've we got 10 minutes left. All right. So, I think I know what everyone's going to pick here, but there's Automata Pizza and the Now Clock. Or we learn to dance and a toast to my husband. Automata Pizza. Not that anyone can spell that, but pizza is pizza. <laughs> you can just use p- pizza for short. Pizza for short. Pizza, pizza for now short. Clock. Or pizza plus now clock. Pizza. Pizza's, pizza. Going pizza. Right. Pizza's going strong. Pizza's going strong. I'm actually it. starting to think because we're this is the first this is the second of 15 virtual bookstore events that we're doing. I'm starting to think maybe we should always close with pizza. We should eat pizza. Make it a pizza party. <laughs> hey, hey, pizza party. hey, 
Speaking of being an advocate for Tulsa, such good pizza. Yeah, throw out some pizza names. Hey, what's your Adam. favorite pizza places? Dude? Throw out some local pizza names so we can support local local books, local pizza. That's it right there. Local there's a lot of good. There's, there's a lot of Andalini's, Bobby yeah, G's, Prairie Fire, Andalini's. Andalini's has a lot of votes. You're get, you're gonna get a lot of Andalini's. And then Pie Hole Pizza and Hungry, Hungry Howie's and Bohemia Pizza. Jesus, I mean, hey, holy cow. Pie Pie Hole's like a mile down the way. Umberto's. Yeah, um, good choices. If you're if you're trying to convince me to come to Tulsa, you're making some good cases right now. I like the yeah. pizza thing. The pizza idea is great. Mm -hmm. I think this could be the birth of the pizza party book concept. Yeah, I'm into it. Because also maybe wine, pizza and wine, like pizza and red wine seems nice. Yeah, I would love some red wine. It seems but, great. Um, I just so pizza is on page. Let's see. Uh, Jen, there is a question. How does it feel to be so awesome? Oh, that's from Catherine. How does it feel? This is like a therapy session. This is funny because in our therapy sessions that we have few and far between when we have them, um, what comes up is I don't take compliments very well. And it's a problem between us. This is huge. But I this am is huge. working on it, taking compliments <laughs> in. And so I accept your compliment and I thank you for saying that. I am awesome. Is that what it was? Can I have a quick example of a yeah. compliment you've given her? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I'll say, like, you're my favorite poet. I'll say, your poetry speaks to me more than anyone's poetry uh, on the planet. And thank then, you. And then she, right now she's saying, thank you. But in real life, I mean, in real there's life, a lot of really there's great not, there's, there's a lot of great, it's just, there's a lot of, defle there's a lot of deflection like that. Uh, but Adam, you're someone of, of the word, of the book, of the good book. Yes. You're a Christian man. I am. Um, don't you think that there's, there must be something in Christianity about accepting love, right? Mm -hmm. and, and there might be some correlation between accepting compliments and accepting love. Would you have any wisdom in that area? Yeah, I think that... Um... Man, it's so funny. I was talking to my wife about this tonight because I paid my friend a compliment and she didn't say thank you. It <laughs> really bothered me. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. My friend, my friend Abby's on here and she would know who I was talking about. And the, she just was like, praise Jesus. And I was just like, what? I don't just say thank you to, the, to what I said. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't yeah. put these into this. I think there, I think there's something deep or the deflection or like maybe you're not comfortable enough with receiving it. I don't know. Isn't there something in the Bible where like somebody t like, accepted a compliment and was fooled by it and went took the wrong path? No. I don't no. know that story. No, no, I think what she's speaking I think what she's speaking to, and there's probably biblical yeah. characters who and I you know this better than I do, Adam, but like We're fooled by who, have nar who have narcissism or who, who are who, are, who want to be flattered. I mean, I think we oh, all yeah. national figures who want to be flattered all the Some time. Some the national figures. Yeah, yeah. There's a few in the Bible. There's a yeah. couple. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I think Jen feels cautionary, of, uh, cautioned by. Um, I must have been hurt. Do you think you are well, not worthy what? of being loved like that? Me? I yes. I, I yeah. would be a bad judge of that, but I probably think I, I feel it's a defensive mechanism. It's definitely a defensive mm. But I'm learning to accept compliments. So Catherine Pitt is saying there's a great uh, part of nonviolent communication by Dr. Marshall, and I couldn't see the bottom of it. Dr. Marshall, do you see it, Adam? Um, yeah. Rosenberg. Uh, yeah, Dr. Marshall Rosenberg. Yeah. And uh, about appreciation and how to give compliments that don't cause anxiety. Well, I'll have oh, yeah. that. Kelly says, when we do to others, then we can receive love as we would like them to receive love from us. When we do to others, is that from the Bible, by the way? It sounds like a passage. Kel Kelly, is it? I don't know every, I don't know every scripture. It's a large book. When we do to others, then we can receive love as we would like them to receive love from us. That feels, okay. that feels biblical. That feels yeah. like it's from Matthew, Mark, Luke, important. or John. Yeah. Oh, or, or okay. Golden Rule. Uh, it feels great to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> back, that, it feels back great to be awesome. 
All right. Um, okay. We're gonna close with a slice of life um, uh, on a mount of pizza, and uh, and I'm just gonna do the front and the back, basically. Okay. Just so you know. We're gonna do that on that. One day I slice of life, and and by the way, we didn't send a shout out. We're we're giving a dollar per book sold to a local nonprofit that we were gonna uh, draw attention to, but I'm, I I have it in my email, the name of it. But, uh, is it? Is it? Well, I won't say what I think it is. No, no, you can. You can say it's just in my. It's in my book. It's in my thing. Well, I might get it wrong, and then I feel bad that it wasn't. Oh, well, I don't know what you're saying. Okay, so it's um, it's the OK Food Bank. Oh yeah, Oklahoma Food Bank. Yeah. Um, and, and so we're gonna give a dollar per book sold. So if you, like, I know you guys already bought this book. If you want another one, if you like it and you think, oh, this is a good gift for the holidays, this is a good birthday gift or whatever it is, and you want to buy a few of them from Magic City Books, uh, in the next 48 hours, we'll, we'll give a dollar for every book sold to the OK Food Bank. And I always give to food banks when I'm touring cities. I actually, uh, I think it's a very worthy uh, cause and I, and then, so I I'm I'm proud to be a part of uh, uh, this uh, marriage. It's going to give to the OK Food Bank. OK, they food can. Bank. I, I've I've been a part of like fundraisers for them. They can do a lot with the dollar. Like they yes, they can. Than, than that's that's, that's really extra, the thing that's extraordinary I've found about food banks is that yeah, what they can do with with the dollars is un, un, unimaginable. And then slice of life is the end of, end of the chapter. One day I take Una to Sal's Pizzeria on a corner in Brooklyn. I order two slices and we sit at a table and eat. Una is thrilled. I say, Una, do you like the pizza? Una says, pee pee, which I'm pretty sure means pizza and also yes. When we finish our slices, she says, pee pee. She wants more pizza and also yes. I'm not, I'm not sure what to do. Her mom said one slice. She didn't say anything about two slices. How much pizza can a one-year-old eat? The battle cry grows stronger. Pee pee! I see this look in her eye that I recognize. She wants more pizza and she wants it now. Ready? Yeah. Let's see, yeah, yeah. Right. The now clock. The now clock is the clock of a toddler in which every number is replaced by the word now and the hands of the now are always pointed directly at the now or between two nows. I have a pizza problem, which is to say that when I see a pizza, I get excited. I perk up and I think, oh, I'd like to have that inside of me. I don't know if it's the circularity or the softness or the warmth, but it's almost sexual. I wouldn't have sex with pizza, but if I ate a pizza in private, I wouldn't mention it to my wife. I'm even excited by the word pizza because it looks like a pizza, which is of course a literary device, a literary device called Anamata Pizza. Two Z's and one A, which is five slices in one word. And that's that's the end of that passage. And that's uh that's Anamata Pizza. Thank you so much, Adam. Thank you. Thanks to Jen. Thank yes. To Jeff and Magic City Books. Yes. Thanks to OK Food Bank for all the seven meals. Seven meals for a dollar they put seven in here. Meals for a dollar. And to thanks to all you folks. There's no way we can turn on their sound momentarily, is there? I don't even know if that's possible. Is that in the universe of possible? Are they not sounded? Are they not? I don't, I don't think it's possible, but we can imagine it. <laughs> I can hear them now. Oh, wow. Well, maybe oh, we wait. Actually, oh, we're we're on, we're we're coming in. on everybody on right now. So let's do like Please. two minutes of just everyone talking over each other, whatever they want to contribute to the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, Samantha, Hi. Stephanie, Susan, thank you. you. Yeah, that was super Appreciate fun. it. That's Martin awesome. Davis. Marilyn Hill, Trevor Moss, Taylor Wright, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Stephanie Kilpatrick. Hi. Linda Kelly. Carrie Fox. 
Are we live? So good. We are live. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> Here we are. We love you. Oh, I love, I love you too. You. Lindy Sullivan. Oh, yes. We How are you doing? doing? Well, uh, we were watching you for Say the first time. Say it again. We thought our daughter was going to walk for the first time while we were watching you. We were like, wait, what are you doing? Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, Thank Laurel you. Kane, Ken Sims, <laughs> Elizabeth Stromberg. Thank hey, you. Elizabeth. Woo! Oh, what? what? <laughs> David Sims. Thank you, Hero. So much fun. Thank you. I wish you could hear us laugh out loud. Oh. <laughs> this is so much fun, everybody. See, guys, yeah. Oklahoma, Tulsa loves you. You should come. Yes, Oklahoma in general, not just Tulsa. Tulsa loves you. If you like the book, you need to get people to sign up for the mailing list and put in Oklahoma. We'll do it. We'll do it. We're going to get that number higher than 192. <laughs> 200. <laughs> 194. Here we go. Here we go. Who is singing? Who is singing? Identify yourself. It's oh, it's an outrage. Someone is stealing the show, literally. Lola. Uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the song that we sing with our daughter right now, which is I'm coming out. I want the world to know. We're, really Ross. We're in a Diana Ross. She's sure. in a Diana Ross face. Maybe the singers could sing. Maybe the singers who are singing right now could sing a verse of that to close us out. I want the world to know. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm dreaming of the Christmas. It's going very well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Magic City Books. And we'll see you all very soon. We really, we really appreciate you supporting the book. And if you like the book, tell your friends. All right, grab another one. We'll give more money to the food bank, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. We love you. We love you too. <laughs> Thank you. I can't Thank scream you. like that when I'm sober. sober. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.